It's Tuesday, 20 August. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to get the crack staff of the Blanco Lirio Global Headquarters to answer four of the most frequently asked questions that were brought up on our report about the Airbus, the historic Airbus A321 dual engine failure and subsequent crash landing in near Moscow on 15 August, where everybody walked away from the aircraft. In the initial video, we went into pretty good detail about Airbus A321 systems that allowed the aircraft to continue to operate even with both engines failed, an aircraft that is primarily an electrically powered and hydraulically powered aircraft. But these four questions still came up. Let's go to Julianne now for our first question. And here to help us answer some of your questions is our staff, Julianne and Pete. What's the first question folks have asked, Julianne? What about the APU? The APU, the auxiliary power unit. I didn't mention the APU in the report because the APU, in this particular emergency, the use of the APU would have been a moot point. The auxiliary power unit is primarily used on engine start or even before engine start to power up the aircraft. By the way, the APU is a small jet engine located in the rear of the aircraft and can be turned on from the cockpit and turned off either from the cockpit or down by the nose gear. The APU primarily is used before engine start to get the aircraft powered up, the full electrical system powered up on the ground and provide bleed air to get the air conditioning going to cool the aircraft off. The APU provides bleed air also for engine start. Once the second engine is started under normal conditions, the APU is then shut off to save fuel. It's no longer needed. Here's where the APU is located in the tail of the A320 series of aircraft, much like most modern airliners. And it's usually a small centrifugal flow gas turbine. The APU by itself can provide electrical power for the aircraft up to 39,000 feet and enough bleed air to pressurize the aircraft up to 20,000 feet. Here's what the APU synoptic looks like on the Airbus ECAM. The APU generator providing enough power to electrically power the whole aircraft in flight with the exception of a few non-essential galley buses. In the event of an emergency where the aircraft is being powered by the batteries only and the RAT has not been deployed, the APU is not permitted to start. The aircraft will not allow the APU to drain the precious battery reserves from the battery in a failed effort to start. However, once the RAT is deployed and is supplying power to the aircraft, the APU is given a three minute window within which to start again to preserve electrical power in the event of an emergency. Regardless, the amount of time during this emergency just didn't allow time for anybody to bother starting the APU. To start the APU, you gotta hit the switch and you gotta wait a little while. You gotta wait for the, a couple of doors to open, the circuits to arm, and then the APU to finally spool up and then come online. This aircraft was in the corn long before any of that could have happened. And now for our next question, here's once again Julianne. Is there a way to design a guard over the engines to protect them from birds? I get this question a lot anytime we're dealing with bird strikes, particularly from non-aviators, but it's a good question. Primarily, I believe the main design problem with trying to create something to protect the engine from birds other than the engine itself is that you're blocking the flow, the smooth flow of air into these engines. 
If you were to create some kind of a grate in front of the engines that would prevent the birds from getting into the engines, you would be disrupting the critical smooth or laminar flow of air into, this, into the engine. If you do that, you're going to create the very same problem that a bird strike would create, and that is compressor stalls. And here to demonstrate what a compressor stall does to you is once again, Lieutenant Pete. That's right, a compressor stall will stall the air flowing over the compressor blades and the high pressure air and fuel and fire inside the engine is going to backfire out both sides, the front and rear of the engine, completely disrupting the airflow and potentially seriously damaging the engine. Once again, the correct procedure for compressor stalls is to retard the throttle until the compressor stalling stops. If the throttle or as you say in Airbuses, as I was correct, corrected, correctly corrected, the thrust levers to idle and the compressor stall still exists, you gotta shut down the engine. So making a grate to protect the front of the engine so far has been an unrealistic goal. More importantly, what the folks gotta do at this particular airport outside of Moscow is do something about the birds, the gulls. Apparently, according to locals that are reporting or f give me feedback comments on this video they're indicating that there is an illegal dump site or some sort of a dump site that's attracting the gulls in the first place and they need to remove that there is millions of dollars spent each year around airports for bird mitigation issues anything from noise noise mitigation guns uh, the, the the type of crops that you grow around the airfield using birds of prey Lots of effort is put into protecting airports from birds, protecting airliners from birds operating out of airports. And here for our next question is once again, Julianne. What about the landing gear? The landing gear is a point of debate possibly, but regardless, apparently whatever this crew did, it worked out perfect and by leaving the gear retracted worked out very well in this particular situation. If the gear was extended in this particular situation, yeah, you may have t absorbed some of the uh, energy of the impact, but you also could have easily, most likely, ripped the landing gear off, and in the process of ripping the landing gear off, puncture the fuel tanks located in the wings and started a fire. Retracting the landing gear on takeoff is a, almost an automatic response in an airliner type aircraft. Re getting the gear retracted in the event of an engine failure is critical to meeting the performance requirements for a single engine climb out. Typically the cadence on a takeoff roll in an airline aircraft sounds something like this. V1, rotate, positive rate, gear up. And that's about how long it takes to go through that iteration. A couple of notes on that. The gear up call is typically based on the radio or radar altimeter, not necessarily the vertical speed indicator as that's a lagging instrument. Going through the process of thinking about lowering the gear in this emergency just simply requires too much time to think about it. The landing gear is uh, primarily based off of the green or left hydraulic system, the heavy hitter. That hydraulic system is spooling down. If you go to lower the gear, you're going to be putting a demand on an already crippled hydraulic system. And you're, with the rat in play, you're relying on the center or blue hydraulic system to power the hydraulic system to continue to operate the flight controls. You do not want to degrade an already degrading hydraulic system by putting a, the huge demand that lowering the landing gear places on it. You may end up with the gear only partially deployed, which would be worse than anything. And here for our next question is young Lieutenant Pete Brown. Brace for impact. When do I start? Go ahead, anytime. Okay. Where was the call uh, to brace for impact? Brace for impact. Uh, yeah. As young Lieutenant Pete reminds us, the most important things in order are to aviate first, navigate, 
communicate. Communicate is the last issue that you have on your plate. In this time-constrained emergency, it appears that the crew simply did not have the time to fiddle around with picking up a microphone or pushing a button to get to the proper PA to make an announcement for everybody to brace, brace, brace. They simply needed to focus 100% of their energy and attention on flying this airplane, keeping the wings level, maintaining the airspeed, and flaring it perfectly into the cornfield. Once the evacuation was underway, there is videotape evidence of the crew getting on the bullhorn just as they're trained and directing passengers away from the plane. So though this crew may be critiqued for no brace for impact call on the PA, I think they did the right thing. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of answering some of these frequently asked questions in the uh, Airbus A321 crash near Moscow on 15 August. Stay tuned to this channel, hit like and subscribe. We're nearing 100,000 subscribers. We could use your bit of support to get over that hump. Once I get over 100,000 subscribers, I hope that I'll finally be able to pick up the phone to YouTube and be able to get some answers from some folks there in YouTube about how this whole thing works. See you here. Sounds like Kilo Papa coming in. Well, that ain't Kilo Papa, that's somebody else. And remember when you subscribe to tap on the little bell and symbol and set it. up your notifications the way you want it. If you want to receive notifications each time a new Blanco Lirio video comes out. Good job, little left crosswind. And on your feet this time. On your feet, or front forward flip on your feet.